Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise on this morning. Oh, we thank you, Lord. For Lord, you're so wonderful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank God for each and every one of you on this morning. We welcome you to the latter house ministry. Glory is expected. Glory to God. Those that are watching via Facebook, we ask you to do us a favor. Please share the broadcast on today. Please tag a friend or a loved one. Leave us your comments. Leave us your prayer requests. Leave us your testimonies. <coughs> Praise God. You can find us not only on Facebook, at the Ladder House Ministries, but you can also find us on Instagram. Let's go subscribe to our YouTube channel, the Ladder House Ministries. We love, amen, to fellowship with you virtually to connect with you and we are so grateful and honored that you joined us on this morning those that will be watching the replay we bless God for you we thank God for you amen amen before we get into our services a couple quick announcements um, women's conference is taking place this week Friday September the 9th 7 30 p.m. Apostle Shauna Wilkerson from Newport News, Virginia, will be the speaker. Then on Saturday morning, starting at 10 a.m., Apostle Shauna Wilkerson, Apostle, Apostle Delmarva Johnson, Pastor Angela Lavender will be our speakers on Saturday, starting at 10 a.m. Please do not miss this. If you have not registered, please go and register. If you can't make it both nights or both days, if you're unable to make it on Friday, there's a registration for Saturday only. We want to see you there. And you can also, if you haven't registered online, when you come, you can register at the door. We want, we want you to come. We want you to be in the house. We do believe there's going to be a kingdom move. We're looking for God to move, to speak. Amen. We're looking for deliverance. We're looking, amen, for that pain that you have been dealing with and going through to work for your good and bring about birthing. Amen. The open womb. Please share this with your friends, your loved ones, your family members. We love to see you there at um, 120 South 2nd Street, Wilmington, North Carolina. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is in his holy temple at all the south for him. I was glad when they said it to me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Amen. Come on, somebody put your hands together and give God praise. Woo, my goodness. Holly, after this week, after this week, amen. Give, oh my God, we have to give God praise. Amen. Glory to God. It's easy to praise God when things are going your way. It's easy to praise God. Amen. When dollars make it's, it's easy to praise God when things are comfortable and, and that you go on in your routine with no problems, amen. But when things are interrupted, amen, when storms come in your life, amen. Oh my God, my God, my God, I found out God is still God. Glory to God, amen. Amen. Our feelings and our emotions, our thoughts say one thing, amen. But God is still right there, amen. God is still delivering, God is still healing, amen. God still speaks, glory to God, amen. His peace still resonates in the midst of the storm, amen. We do give God praise on today. Lord, we say hallelujah. We exalt your name, God. Lord, we magnify you, God. Lord, we give you all the glory. Hallelujah. Worship belongs to nobody else but you, God. Hallelujah. The true and living God. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we say thank you. Lord, you're so loving. Lord, you're so gracious and merciful. And Lord, we say thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, our Father. We thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, come saturate this place, God. Oh, God, hallelujah. Let your glory, God, just overshadow us, God. Oh, God, on today, Lord, we ask you, God, to refill us with your presence. Refill us with your spirit, God. Lord, I need a refilling. Lord, more of you, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we ask you for anointing in this place, God, that will destroy every yoke, God, that the kingdom of darkness tried to unleash upon your people. Lord, you are our strong tower. And Lord, on today, we're seeking you, God. Lord, we bow down before you, Lord. And Lord, we surrender. Oh my God, the 
battle is not ours, it's yours, God. Lord, we don't have the strength, but you do. Oh, God, I thank you. Lord, we don't, know, we don't have the know-how, God, but you do. Hallelujah. Lord, you're almighty, you're holy. And Father, we just thank you. You are an unchanging God. Therefore, we are not consumed. We thank you, God, for being the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord God, we, just, we can just stay here all day, God, just saying thank you. We can't say it enough, Lord. Lord, we thank you, God, for not only what you are doing, not only for what we see you doing, God, but, Lord, we thank you, God, for keeping us safe, God, from the things that we didn't know were trying to attack us. We thank you, God, for being our refuge. Oh, we cry out, Abba, Father. Lord, we love you. Lord, we adore you. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, come in and have your way. Lord, I lift up the worship team to you on this morning. I lift up our minister of music, God. Lord, let your Shekinah glory, God, just rest upon them. Lord, I ask you to take them beyond singing, God, and put them in a place of ministry. As they open their mouths, God, to bring forth song, God, let them minister in song, God, in the name of Jesus. Let the song, God, let, let, the, let, let the psalmist on this, on this day, God, reach the very souls of your people. And Lord, I lift up Miss Erica to you, God. Lord, whatever she is dealing with, whatever she's going through, God, whatever situation she's in, God, Lord God, I ask you to release a power in her worship on today, God, as she's playing on the ivories, God. Use what she plays through the ivories, God, as her worship, God. Hallelujah. That will release, God, a grace in her life, in the life, in the lives of her husband and her children, God, in her home, God, in the name of Jesus. Release your glory upon them, God. A glory, God, that will even extend to her job, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we give you praise. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. okay to give him hallelujah. the highest praise. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 God, we thank you and we honor you on this morning. Hallelujah. 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 Hey, God. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody put your hands together. Clapping our hands, lifting our voice. We 
will you come to praise you, praise you? Clapping our hands, lifting our voice, will you come to praise you, praise you? Clapping our hands, lifting our voice, clapping our hands, lifting our voice, clapping our hands, lifting our voice. We come to praise you, praise you. One Lord, one day. We come to praise you, praise you. One Lord, one day. We come to praise you, praise you. Clapping our hands, lifting our voice. We come to praise you, praise you, one Lord, one faith. We come to praise you, praise you, clapping our hands, lifting our voice. We come to praise you, praise you, clapping our hands, lifting our voice. We come to praise you, praise you. Hallelujah. 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 God, we thank you. Hallelujah. We've come, hey God, to praise you, praise you. Father, we've come to praise you on this morning. We've come to worship you on this morning. Lord, we've come to give you your due on this morning. It shouldn't just be a Sunday thing, but on this morning, we come specifically to praise you and honor you, God. Hallelujah. Father, we come to worship you on this morning. God, we worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh, my God. God, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you. Thank you, Lord. My Lord. Father, we worship you. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. Mm -hmm. I worship you, Almighty God. There is none like you. I worship you, O Prince of Peace. That is what I long to do. I give you praise, for you are my right.
and the honor. We lift our hands in worship. We bless your holy name. You deserve the glory. Hallelujah. And the honor. We lift our hands in worship. We bless your holy name. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You deserve the glory and the honor. We lift our hands in worship. We bless your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. your holy name. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. There is no one. There is no one else like you. Hallelujah, God, we thank you. We honor you. We praise your holy name. Hallelujah. 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 I don't know about y'all, but I had one of them weeks pastor is talking about. But when I stopped and looked around, I saw God, mm, my Lord. I saw how he worked. I saw how he sent his earthly angel. I saw his angels protect, protecting me and my boys on this week. Thank you, God. And I just Hallelujah. have to give him glory and praise on this morning. I have to give him glory on this morning. I have to give him his due. going through take a step back Jesus. and see God see how great he is see how awesome he is see how much of a wonderful father he is my God father we love you on this morning if we could just move in the spirit of worship on this morning if we could just thank God on this morning for everything that he's done, 
everything that he's doing and everything that he's going to do. We thank God for his healing power on this morning. We thank God because the situation could have been much worse in my house, in pastor's house, in pastor's mother-in-law's house than it was. So we thank God on this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give him praise. We give him honor. We glorify his holy name on this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus, bind it, God, in the name of Jesus. Bind it, God. Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Jesus.
There's none like you, God. There's none like you, God. There's no one like you, Father. There's none. God, I thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, thank you, God.
Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we thank you for your blood. Thank you, God. Lord, you're so worthy. Yes, Lord Jesus, we thank you, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. you have place in each and every person, Lord. Lord, release that fountain, God, so waters will flow in their spirit, Lord, in their lives, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, your people are here, God, even praising you, God, for your protection throughout the week. And God, we thank you. Lord, release this holy manna into your people on today. Release this word, Lord. Jesus, Lord, I don't want to get in the way. Lord, let my entire being, God, be in submission to you, Lord. Feed these your people, God, that which they need to encourage them, to strengthen them, to draw them closer to you, for them to see you, Lord, in the midst of their storms. Lord, not only let us feel you, God, but Lord, we pray for an impartation on today, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you, God, for healing my wife, Shannon. I thank 
thank you for healing my mother-in-law, Dottie, God. Thank you, God, for healing those who are here, God, for whatever infirmity it may be. In the name of Jesus, whatever system, whatever organ, whatever nerve, whatever joints, whatever muscles, we speak healing to them in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray on today, God, for our sister, for our friend, for your daughter, Evangelist Patrice Bloodworth. Lord, let her know, God, that she's not alone. Let your glory fill her room, Lord. Let your presence dwell on the inside of her, God. Lord, we ask you to speak to every organ and align it with your word, God. Every level, God, that's off course, out of whack, Lord, we pray that, that you regulate it, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, restore your hope in her, God. Continue to build her faith in you, God. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask you to encamp your angels all around her room, Father. Lord God, we pray, God, that you serve an eviction notice on every evil and wicked spirit, God, that's trying to keep her in that sick space, in that space of infirmity. And Lord, we pray, God, that your angels, God, will not allow any entrance to any spirit that's not like you. That everything that falls out of agreement with your healing, God, will not be allowed in the room. In the name of Jesus, Lord, anoint the medical staff. Lord, even as they're talking, God, let them speak what you're speaking. Let them speak, God, in response to her prayers. Use them as your vessels, God, in the name of Jesus. Lead and guide them, God, in every treatment and every prescription, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray a spirit of grace. Lord, we pray a spirit of compassion upon the medical staff in the name of Jesus. Lift up her mother, God, evangelist Marilyn, her sister Kim, her daughter Sharice, her nephew Jamal, her nieces, niece and nephews. We lift up that family, God, continue to strengthen them, God, increase their strength, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We give you glory. Lord, let your peace resonate in this place on today. Lord, send your peace, God, to that room that Shannon is in right now. Send peace, God, to Evangelist Patrice's room. Send peace, God, to Evangelist Marilyn, the mother of Marilyn, and to Kim, God. Send peace to that family, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, on today, we ask you to send peace, strength, God, and grace to the Powers family. Healing upon them, Father, in the name of Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah, we thank you. Lord, as his word goes out, God, let it be released so, God, that it will bring about healing. Let it bring your people out of that place of bondage. Let it cause fear to run and never come back. Thank you. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to try to go expeditiously through this, but I won't. On today, I believe God is sending a word of encouragement. And as I was praying on this week, this text came to my mind, and this is where, this is when, when, this is where I've had to stay at, if you will. And I was like, what, what, what's coming out of this? We go into Psalm 27, verses 13 through 14. Psalm 27, verse 13 through 14. I thank God for our virtual family, those that are watching from South Carolina, those watching from Charlotte, Fayetteville, Hope Mills, uh, Wilmington, North Carolina, um, um, Sandyfield, East Arcadia, Riggerwood, Armour, 
those that are watching in the Virginia area, Maryland area. We thank God for you. I'm missing someone, but I thank we 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 notice. I just thank God for you all. Amen. And thank you all for joining us. Amen. On this morning, those that are watching from the the Clinton area, Wallace area, we thank God for you. Psalm 27, 13 through 14 says, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. That is so powerful because Paul, watch, I'm not Paul, I'm sorry, David is giving, he, he, he says, he tells us, I had fainted. He, he makes it personal. I had fainted unless I believe. But then he goes on and he, he, he gives us a word of encouragement in a sense. He also, I look at it as he, he's commanding us out of the place that he's in. And he says, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen. As a way of encouragement on today, we want to speak from the topic, something to hold on to, something to hold on for. Something to hold on to, and something to hold on for. Um, over the week, I've had, being at home, had the opportunity to watch one of the sports that I love, football, yes, is my favorite, but I also love tennis. And I had a chance to watch and reflect. We, those that follow and watch, you understand that the tennis world has been celebrating um, probably the, the greatest female tennis player of all time is Serena Williams. Uh, some people will argue that fact, but to me, she's the GOAT. Um, she has won 23 Grand Slam titles, which is the most in the open era. I'm getting somewhere. I'm getting somewhere. <clears throat> to see so many people coming out and celebrating her, because they knew this would probably be her last Grand Slam tournament. They came just to show their appreciation for her. This lady has not only changed the sport itself, but she's changed the lives of people. Why do I bring her? She, she, she's, she's so, when, when, when you watch her on the tennis court, she's so tenacious. She's so aggressive. She's like a lioness out there on the tennis court. But then when you hear her talk, she has such a grace about her. Why are you saying that, Brian? Because... You know, she was born in Michigan in 1981, but she, she was raised in Compton, California. And, and during a time, watch this, where her father tried to get her, and wanted, she, her father already knew that, that he wanted Venus and Serena to become tennis players. But their, their, their environment, if you will, was not one that supported the vision. If we read the story, I got to go back and watch the movie, but if you read some of the story, we see that, that watch this, that they, they weren't able to start playing tennis in some of the country clubs that others were, uh, that was available to others. They played in tennis courts in, in their neighborhood, in the hood. They weren't probably always the best tennis courts to play on. Watch this. There were people that, that their father would go to from time to time in order to try to get, you know, to get help, you know, to try to, to if, you, if you will, from my different, this is how I look at it, partners, if you will, to help him in training them to become tennis players, and they turned him down. People looked at them because of the way they dressed, because of the way they looked, and they watch this, because of their skin color, they looked down on them. I bring her up because she, as we celebrate her, watch this, we're not worshiping her. We, as we celebrate her, we look at the trials. Watch this. Even, even as she, even her, even her, has her and her sister earned their way in the tennis circuit, they still had to fight. Places they went to play tournaments, they weren't welcomed at. They will call that name. We know what name we're talking about but they stood in their fall. She even said herself since 1999 has been always been a target on her back, but she always showed up and competed. And, and, and she, she carried again, that grace, she carried that tenacity about her. That's what we celebrate. 
That's what the people were celebrating because she made it through. Her father's vision, his dream came through, came true through his daughter. She celebrated for making it through the trials and the tribulations. She made it through, watch this, people not always supporting her and backing her. Going right into the middle of, of enemies, if you will, going right in, in the middle, in, in places where she knew she would not be accepted and she broke records. Watch this. She changed the game. She changed how people approach the game. Other young girls, yes, black, white, and girls of, of, of other nationalities, I heard them say it. She was the one that brought them to the sport. She was the one that, that, that they looked up to and modeled their game after. Oh, my God. She, when I say she changed the sport, not just in the way she played, but how others desired to come into the sport, how others, even themselves, approached the game. That's greatness. That's greatness whenever you can make it through, whenever others are trying to do everything they can to try to make you unsuccessful in the thing that you're in. That's greatness whenever you can walk into something and change the entire influence, the entire arena of how something is done. That's greatness. So we celebrate. I was watching this. I was just so in awe. I was emotional too because I've been watching tennis since I was like 11 years old. But when, but, but in, in like around 96, 97, when, when Venus and Serena came on, Watching them, you can watching their growth, watching their evolution. It just does, it just did something. And, and this week, watching it, it, it brought out it, it just caused us to remember all of that, all that she came through. And I looked at, I believe, as a testimony for someone that you can make it, that you can get through. Everybody may not be on your side, you may not have the support always that you think you need, but you keep fighting. She had a mindset to fight, and she stood there, I believe, as a symbol of someone that made it through the fight, someone who showed greatness. And I believe through that, somewhere along the way, through all that, she had to find something to hold on to. Oh, my goodness. She had to find something to hold on for. Because she didn't want to give up. But in continuing and doing what she was doing, it took struggle because of the storms in her life. It's the same thing with us. In the storms, sometimes we will, whenever the winds are, are blowing, whenever, whenever you watch the animated uh, cartoons sometime and things, you see these characters in these storms. The storms are like blowing them away. They're finding something to reach out to and hold on to. And that's sometimes where we are, where we get to in our lives. We're trying to find something to hold on to. Watch this. We have to be careful. A lot of times, the things that we really try to reach out to, to grab on or hold on to are tangible. What's tangible? Tangible is something that's capable of being touched. It's something that's discernible by touch. And a lot of times, that's, watch this, that's the immediate thing. And that's the thing that we really reach out for whenever we're in trouble, whenever we're going through, however we want to put it. That's what we want to reach out for because it's there. And I found that some of the things that, that, that would, would, would help me or make me laugh or give me happiness sometimes was not there whenever I needed it. Watch this. And if it was there, it could not do for me what I thought it could do because the trial, oh my God, was bigger than that. Why do you bring about the tangible thing, Brian? Because remember in the book of Exodus, it was whenever Moses was on the mountain, amen, and, and whenever the people thought he was delayed in coming down, amen, the people got themselves together and they got Aaron and said, look, Aaron, look, say, your, your brother, we don't know what's become of him. In other words, they, 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 they got Aaron and said, Aaron, uh, let, let us make, make us some gods, little G gods. Watch this. You know why? Because they couldn't see Moses. They couldn't hear Moses. They couldn't make that connection to Moses. And they wanted something to be able to hold on to. They needed something tangible. And they used what was, watch this, they tried to use what was tangible 
to replace the living God. They took what was tangible, that which was created, and gave credit to it for their deliverance instead of giving credit to the creator. If you read Exodus 32, 28, whenever, whenever they had Aaron make that calf, they said, these be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. They now take in this, this, this created thing because they wanted to put their hands on something. They created it, and then after creating it, they gave it credit for only something that God could have only done. Uh -huh. Whenever we, we want something tangible, mm -hmm. doubt creeps in our minds whenever something is not tangible. In the storms and trouble we experience, a tangible, watch this, cannot help us. Watch this. So the children of Israel couldn't hold on to what they had already seen of God. <laughs> they couldn't hold on to, to, hold on to God and take him at his word, so, so they made other gods. Let me say it again. They couldn't hold on to what God had already done for them. They didn't want to do, they didn't want to hold on to what God had already spoken. They needed something right then and there. We even see this, we talked about it a few weeks ago in Numbers 13, even how they couldn't even, in the, in the face of the giants, even though they saw the promise, they couldn't believe the promise because they'd rather believe the giants and the power of the giants more than they could the promises of God. I'm getting somewhere. When it's seen, watch this, David, David's one of my favorite biblical characters. You know why? Because David is one that showed his humanity. He showed his weakness. He shows to us that you can mess up and God will still accept you back. He shows you can mess up and you can turn back to God and God will keep you and put you back on that path that you are on. He showed that you can mess up and God will clean you up and bring you in and hold you. He showed, he showed, he showed to us, watch this, he showed to us even as king, even as having a title, even as having a position, watch this, he showed us that we will have enemies. Mm. David showed us in the, in the midst of all that, he showed us victory. Yes, David has, he, he has, we're going to read the psalm here, we're going to see David had many enemies on different levels. He had friends that became enemies. He had just folk that were just straight up enemies, people that just foes. He had family members that became enemies. And at times, David was his own worst enemy. Maybe I don't want to talk back. I mean, sometimes we're our own worst enemy. But when it's seen, we, we just talking, we just we was talking today because you got to, we want to get this in our spirit. Because the people of God, are, people in general are going through and people need something to hold on to. When it seemed everyone was against him, when it seemed there was nobody there to encourage him. Any, oh, my goodness. Can I, oh, like the pre, old preacher said, can I get a witness? Have you ever been there where it seemed like there was nobody there to encourage you? When there was nobody there to encourage David, David encouraged himself in the Lord. In that time, and back in 1 Samuel 30, whenever that incident took place in Ziklag, the Bible says David was greatly distressed because the people spoke of stoning him. The people wanted to take him out. They wanted to kill him. Watch this. The, the people were greed. They were at a place. Watch this. They did, even though they, were, they lost something, they, they, didn't, they didn't think to themselves that David had lost something too, but they wanted to take him out. So the Bible tells us that David encouraged himself in the Lord, his God. Amen. Talking about something to hold on to. Sometimes, amen, there may not be somebody there to encourage you. You may not get that telephone call to say, look, you were on my spirit today. I just want to encourage you. Can I pray with you? Sometimes it does not happen. And sometimes we have to try to encourage ourselves. I'm not sure about what period of time that David, David was in in his life um, um, during this psalm, but we can tell that the psalm does come from a place that speaks of trouble. We can tell that he's, he's experienced things from his enemies and adversaries and violent witnesses and, and false witnesses and I'm sorry violent men and false witnesses we we've all experienced that before but in the midst of of, of his trouble David has confidence in God mm. and I'm gonna say it again in the midst of his trouble David has confidence in God 
In the midst of his trouble, David shows a desire for God. Have you ever been somewhere and he's like, I need, I need something to hold on to. Uh -huh, that won't do it. That won't do it. You know what I need. You know who I need. I need God. In the midst of his trouble, David shows us we have something to hold on to and something to hold on for. Who am I talking to on this morning? I want to tell you, have something. Oh, my goodness, to hold on to, and you have a reason. You have something to hold on for. In this psalm, David introduces his opposition to us, and as he introduces his opposition, he also introduces God. Oh, my goodness. Sometimes whenever we're going through, we have to let what we're going through, we have to introduce our going through to who God is. And David introduces his opposition, and he introduces God. And when he introduces God, he introduces God as, oh, my goodness, as his light and his salvation. He introduces God as, as, as being the Lord of his strength. Paul even tells us in Ephesians 6 and 10 to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Sometimes we don't realize what it is to have God be the strength of our life because we trust in so many other things for strength. Sometimes we don't do it on purpose, but it happens. Let's be real, it happens. It happens. And, 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 and we, we depend on these things for our strength. And it's when those things fail, we look for something to hold on to and something to hold on for. It is God who is our strength. It is God who gives us strength. The same David wrote in Psalm 18, he says, look, I will love thee, O Lord. He identifies him as my strength. You have to make it personal. God is not only the strength of the preacher. He's not only the strength of that person or the other person. He is also your strength. Oh, my God. David said he's rock. He's my fourth. Oh, how many people know that we need something sturdy, something secure to stand on sometimes in the midst of the storm? He says he's my fortress. Oh, glory to God. He's my deliverer. He's my God. Then David said again in Psalm 18, he's my strength. Then he says, in whom I will trust. He is my buckling, the horn of my salvation. He's my high tower. Then he says, I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Even Isaiah wrote, he says in Isaiah 42, now he giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might, he increases their strength. In holding on, we have to remind ourselves of what God had already done for us. And this is where David is. David is trying to find something to hold on to in the midst of whatever he's dealing with. And sometimes we have to hold on to who we know God is in our life. Not, not, what, not by what somebody else said. I mean, we have to know for ourselves. And David knew for he had to have nobody to let him know. He knew for himself that God is his strength. Oh, my God. In holding on, glory to God, David again remind himself. He says, watch, in the, if you read the entire psalm, he says, when my, when, when my enemies, uh -huh, when my foes came up against me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Amen. David recognized that before he was in the midst of some troubles, in the midst, and before there were enemies that came up against him, but they stumbled and he, and he fell. They fell. Amen. When we see that part about how they wanted to eat up his flesh, we can, we can kind of tie it into to the moment, his moment with Goliath. Back in 1 Samuel 17, because remember, Goliath told David, says, I'm going to give your flesh to the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. But David was reminded, amen, that he went into that battle with the Lord. So wherever he is right now, Psalm 27, he lets us know that, yes, even though they want to eat up my flesh, they're going to stumble and fall. Somebody ought to give God praise right now. I know it feels like you're being devoured. I know it feels like your enemy is trying to get the best of you. Oh, my God. But glory to God. Hallelujah. God in you will give you strength. Hallelujah. Watch this. Even though you may not feel it right, then you got to convince yourself. Oh, you got to know for yourselves. Glory to God. Until that strength comes, know that God is going to deal with the enemies. Hallelujah. God, I thank you. Hallelujah. And reminding ourselves of the battles. We've been, we've been in battles before. 
and look back at him. Sometimes when you look back at him like, Lord, I don't know how I got out of it. It had to be you, God. I don't know, God, how I made it from that point to this point, but it had to be you, God. Even at times, God, when I couldn't see you working, amen, whenever I woke up the next day and I saw I was at this place, the only explanation I can come up with was that was God. Oh, God, how can, I, how, how can I explain, God, that my enemies have shut their mouth? How can I explain, God, amen, God, that, that my enemies, amen, have, have fallen away? How can I explain, God, that my enemies no longer, God, had the same strength anymore? It had to be God. Oh, my God. In reminding ourselves of the battles God has brought us through, watch this, brings assurance to us that our confidence in the Lord is battle-tested. Oh, my God. Look back at the things that God brought you through. And that, watch this. The devil is trying to tell you that there's something wrong with your faith. The devil is trying to tell you, glory to God, that you're fainting in this one, that you want it, that it's best for you to give up in this one. But look at what God has brought you through. And know for yourself, baby, that you're battle-tested. Oh, my God, my God. David said, though, though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war shall arise against me. In this, I will be confident. David is in the midst of his trouble, right in the midst of war. And he said, look, I mean, watch this. He's looking at those that are encamping around him. And he says, look, my heart shall not fear. He says, the war shall rise against me. Watch this. I shall be confident. David is finding confidence in the midst of the battle. Watch this. Having, watch this. Uh, he's, he's, in other words, having confidence. He's saying, I have a strong belief in God. I have full assurance. In other words, he said, I'm trusting in him. Well, David, why are you trusting? Uh-huh. Why are you so confident in this, David? Watch this. His confidence is not in the trouble. His confidence is I have something to hold on to. And his confidence in the fact that I have something to hold on for. Like Paul wrote, he says, what shall we say of these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? I know it's not easy sometimes. We talk about faith and we talk about trust. And there's no there's times where it's not easy because you see what you see. You know what you know. You hear what you hear. You feel what you feel. Sometimes it's not easy easy watch this oh but we have a god hallelujah you have a father mm, 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 mm. that's not moved that's not weakened by those things he's his power his strength is the same as it was on yesterday his strength is the same as it was in that previous season where you were going through you didn't know how you were going to make it out he's still the same god uh, watch this in his trouble and is speaking about God and his goodness, David gets to a place of desire. Oh, oh, did you know that sometimes your trouble can call, can create a desire? Oh, it, it, it created a place of seek. And David, see, he, he's in his trouble. He said, the Lord is, a, is, is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? He's talking about how his enemies and his foes are coming up against him. But then he says, I'm going to be confident. And now he says, one thing I have desired of the Lord, that will I seek after. He's not even talking about trouble in that, in that text in, in 27 and 4. He's not talking about trouble. Now his focus is shifting on God. He says that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. David desired to be surrounded by God's presence and God's beauty. And while in God's presence, he wanted to inquire. Oh, my goodness. He wanted to, he wanted to know, he wanted to know more. God, I'm here, but I want to know more about you, God. God, I know you brought me through that last storm, God, but I want to know more about you, God. I'm in something different this time, God. Uh, 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 I'm in something, God, that's trying to cause me to be afraid, God. I'm in something, God, right now, God, that's causing me, God, to, to, to even question my faith, God. I'm in something right now, God, where, where, the, where the devil is speaking through to me through this situation. Lord God, Lord, Lord, I, I, I need you, God. I, I, I seek you, God. I need, I desire you, God. In my desire, God, I'm inquiring of you. I need more of you, God. In other words, David is saying, I, I need to commune with you, God. 
Have you ever been in that place where you know the trouble, you're sitting in the trouble, you feel the trouble, but even in the midst of that, you're crying out, God, I just want to be with you, God. Lord God, I just want your presence, God, to engulf me, God. Lord God, I'm, I want to, I'm seeking your face, Lord. Lord, I just want to feel your presence, God. Lord, let your power, God, overshadow me, God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, refill me, God, because I'm feeling empty right now. Jesus, but out of all of that, they, a, a desire was created. And I'm here to tell you on today that even though you may be going through, I'm, I'm telling you, you have something to hold on to or something to hold on for. In the midst of your trouble, just seek God. Glory to God. Allow the pain from that trouble to create a desire to get into the face of your father. Allow the pain of the, of the trouble, amen, and of the storms allow you, glory to God, to seek God, amen, and to inquire in his temple, to come, amen, before his throne. David in this trouble knew that God, he knew that God was his refuge and his fortress. He knew God was his shelter. He knew God was his protection in the midst of his enemies, his storms, and his trouble. Because in, in that he said, David says, for in a time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. God's pavilion is a shelter. Mm. He says, in the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me, he shall set me upon a rock. David knows that in a storm that he can find God and God would be his shelter. He knows that in the midst of the storm, even though the floods may come out of the storm, David knows that God is his rock. God is his stable place. When everything around you seems to be blowing, everything around you seems to be out of place. When everything around you seems to be in chaos, when it seems like there's nothing stable, God is. We have something to hold on to. Glory to God. After this, David goes into prayer. You, you have to read it because David, he's at one place. Then he goes, just like we are when we go through. He's at one place. Then he goes to another. Then he comes back to God. Then he goes to another. Watch this. After all this, even after David testifies of this, David goes into a prayer. And how do I know that David was going through? Because he's, he says, the Bible says he's crying to the Lord. And he's asking God to hear him and have mercy on him and to answer him. Oh, my God. Has anybody ever been in that place before? Lord, I'm crying out to you, God. Lord, I need you to hear me, God. But, Lord, don't just hear me, God. I need you to answer me. I need an answer, God. This lets us know things were not easy for David. David, the man that was after God's own heart, David, the king, was so troubled at times that he felt at times God did not hear him in the midst of. We can hold on to God. There's sometimes where God may not speak to us in our trouble, but you keep praying. You keep holding on to him. You keep testifying of the goodness of God. You keep speaking to your problem and telling your problem who God is. You say that God is my shelter. God is my strong tower. God is my strength. God is my rock. God is my heel. However you want to word it. Glory to God. Watch this. God responds. Mm. Hallelujah. That's what we're looking for whenever we're in trouble. We're looking for a heavenly response. We're looking for our God to speak. And in the midst of David saying, Lord, hear my cry, hear my prayer, God, answer me. <laughs> we feel some kind of way sometimes when we're we, we praying, we're talking to God that way. It's not like we're telling God what to do, but we God, we speak, it's letting God know God is speaking to you from a desperate place. God, everything around me, God, is falling. I have nothing to hold on to but you, God. Your word tells me, Lord, that you are almighty. Your word tells me that you are my strength. Not only your word, God, but I have experienced it in my life, God. I know that you are that, God. So in the midst of this, God, I need you to show up. I need, I need the I am to be I am in this moment. In the midst of that, watch this. The Lord gives David an invitation. At some point in time, the Lord told David to seek his face. And David's response was, thou sayest, seek my face. My heart says, I will seek thy face. But watch this. Watch where David's going again. This is how we do what we're going through. He says, hide not thy face from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. 
Thou has been my help. David remembers, Lord, you have been there in times past, God. You have helped me through some things, Lord. Then he says, leave me not, neither forsake me. Oh, God of my salvation. David knows that God is his deliverer. And that's how we are sometimes. David is searching for something to hold on to and for something to hold on for. <clears throat> Teach me thy way, O oh Lord. Lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. <clears throat> David is asking for, when he said that word plain means smooth. David is not saying uh, uh, that I want you to move all trouble out of my way, but, but the word smooth, that it means level or even. So what David is asking for, he's asking for a secure place in his standing in the storm. A stable place to stand against the storms of life. Why says David had previously already said that God was his light and salvation. David already knew that God was his strength, but now he's back in prayer. That's how it is when we're going through. We're testifying. We know who God is. We're praising God for who he is. We, it's almost like we're worshiping God, right, right, right. We're in that place, and then all of a sudden, that, that thing hit us again. Uh, like we're going to hit us all over again. Glory to God. It didn't go nowhere. It's right there. It's waiting for an opportunity. It came right back, right? It came right back. So, so David, David, he's back here in the same place that teach me that way oh lord lead me in a plain and a plain path because of my enemies david is still praying because he's reminded of his enemies he's reminded of what he's going through but in being reminded of the opposition he's also reminded of god and he reaches out to god said lord i need you to lead me because of my enemies god has already spoken to david it says, seek my face. But as we, are, as we do, we in that place, I hear you, Lord, I'm seeking you, God. Oh, God, I'm crying to you, God. Hear my prayer, God. Answer me, God. Oh, oh watch this, watch this. Then he says, deliver me not over into the will of my enemies. For false witnesses are risen up against me as such as breathe out cruelty. Mm. He said, my, my enemies, Lord, have been lying in ambush, is waiting for an opportunity to catch me unaware, and then they're going to attack. Waiting for an opportunity, Lord, to invade. Waiting to set a trap, Lord. Lord, I need your deliverance. Oh, that leads us to our text and to our clothes. After David went through, we, we, we don't want to be rude. After, we, after David went through that roller coaster ride, just like we do when we're going through. Then he comes to our text. And David, I, I can see him standing up in the spirit. In the midst of all that, David said, I have fainted. He, he knew, he knew, he looked back and saw what he was going through. And he knew that his going through could have taken him out. He should have taken him out. Watch this. But he said, I have fainted. I would have go, I would have fainted in all of this unless. I chose to hold on to something. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Let me put it like David is saying, look, I would have lost heart unless I had believed. That's our something to hold on to is belief. We're going through what we have to believe that God can do. We have to believe that he is able. We have to believe that he is willing. David said, I would have fainted. I would have given up with all that you have been through, with all that you're going through right now. I know you say I should have given up. You know, so maybe I would have given up. But, you know, I found someone to hold on to. Mm. Truth be told, somebody probably was watching you and say, you know something, Joe, you might as well go ahead and give up. Somebody was looking from afar. Somebody may whisper in your ear, say, won't you just give up on that thing? Won't you just give No, 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 baby. You keep believing. You hold on to it. That's why we say hold on because holding on is the complete opposite of letting go. Even when we let go, we give up. When we let go, we allow the storm to take us where it wants to take us. But you hold on in the midst of the storm. Uh, to lose heart means to begin to feel that you cannot do something that you've been trying to do. To lose heart means to become discouraged. Watch this, watch this. To faint is a lack of darkness. 
But David said in the midst of his darkness, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Glory to God. To faint means to lack strength. To faint means to feel exhausted. But David says, the Lord is my strength. How many people know that in the thing when you're going through, it sucks and drains everything that you have out of you. But God is our strength. And David is letting us know this on today. Oh my, he's saying, don't lose courage. Don't lose spirit. Glory to God. Uh, don't lose your spiritual consciousness. He said, I would have ain't it. Glory to God. Unless I had believed. Unless I was holding on, you keep holding on. You have something to hold on to. I know it seems like there's so much more going on around us and, and, and less things to hold on to, but God is right there for you to hold on to. And watch this. This is what the devil is trying to do. He wants us to become weary. He wants us to faint. He wants us to lose heart. It's just like Daniel said. He, he tells us that the devil wants to wear out the saints of the Most High. He wants to get, to get us to a place, amen, where we're no longer strong in the Lord. He wants to get us to a place to where prayer is no longer part of our lives. He wants to get us to a place where we no longer praise and worship God. He wants to get us to a place where we're no longer testifying of the goodness of God. He wants to get us to a place where we're fair weather worshipers, fair weather worship. You know what I'm talking about. But we're only praising and worshiping God when things are going good. We're only clapping and shouting when things are going good. But when trouble comes, we become silent. When trouble comes, oh my God, whenever trouble comes, we become absent. Amen. That's the time where the body of Christ, amen, needs to stand up, glory to God, in the midst of what they're going through, in the midst of what they're dealing with, because it's in that time, amen, where you will definitely see the power of God moving. Jesus, Jesus. David said in Psalm 34, 4, I sought the Lord. He heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Ah, oh, David is talking about a kingdom power here. I would have fainted unless I chose to believe. Mm. And I want to let somebody know you have something to hold on to because there is a divine power that's there to keep you holding up. Oh, my God. We have to well, glory to God. We, we, we have to we have thing to do. We have something. Watch this. We have something to hold on to. We have we have the belief in God to hold on to. Uh, how many people know that God is good? That's something to hold on to. How many know that God is our Savior? That's something to hold on to. How many people know God is our refuge and our strength? That, that's something to hold on to. How many people know that God is present in trouble? That's something to hold on to. How many people know that God is Emmanuel? He's right there with us. How many people know that God is, is Jehovah Rapha? He's a God that heals. How many people know him as Jehovah Shalom? He's the Lord of peace. How many people know him as the I am? How many people know him as, um, as Adonai, our Lord, our God? How many people know him as El Shaddai, Lord God Almighty? How many people know him as Jehovah Jireh, the Lord that provides? He is Jehovah Raha, the Lord, my shepherd. He is God. That's enough right there for us to hold on to. There's so much more. But we can hold on to that right there. Amen. That's who God is in our lives. I was reminded this morning, oh, my goodness, mm, of a song we used to sing back in Mount Zion, Missionary Baptist Church. Oh, I remember my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but holy lane on Jesus' name. We're talking about something to hold on to. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds with the veil. His oath, his covenant, his blood supports me in the whelming flood. When all around my soul gives, what he did is all my hope and my stay. In other words, the psalmist said, I found something to hold on to, and I found something to hold on for. We ought to praise God right there. Oh, the, oh, the same psalmist says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. The same David wrote and said, Look, oh, I give thanks unto the Lord. You know why? Because he is good. 
My situation may not be good. It may not feel good, but God is good. He doesn't change. He's always good. And his mercy endure forever. There's no ending to God's loving kindness. To him alone, oh my God, my God, who he does great wonders. For his mercy endure forever. I'm going to tell somebody on today that you have something to hold on to. Don't you give up right now. It's not the time to give up now. Oh, you may be on the cusp of something. I know it doesn't feel good, but the Bible tells me that it's working for my good. Oh, I don't like it. I'm uncomfortable. I'm aggravated. I'm frustrated. I've been crying through this thing. I've been hurt through this thing. Oh, but I have someone to hold on to. God Almighty, the great I am. Mm. Mm. David said, I would have fainted unless I believe. That's my something to hold on to. Then he says, unless I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That's our something to hold on for. I'm holding on to my belief, but I have something to hold on for. To see his good in the land of the living. Uh-huh. David knew that good would come. Oh, my goodness. Uh, he knew that because of who God is, uh, he knew that good was coming. Uh, he knew that if he kept seeking God, he knew that if he kept abiding with the Lord, uh, there would be good, glory to God, for him to see. Uh, I know right now all you see is your problems. Uh, I know all you see now is the trouble. Uh, I know all you see now is reason to be depressed. Uh, I know all you see now is reason to be stressed. Uh, amen but yo, glory to God. If you get to an abiding place, God, David knew that he would see good. You know why? Because the Lord himself is good. And David knew he made, if he made his life as a life of abiding, he would see that which he's abiding in. And if he's abiding in God, he knew that somehow, sooner or later, he was going to see good. It may not look good at the moment, but I'm going to hold on. Somebody had to shout, I have something to hold on to. I have something to hold on for. It's not easy, but we must walk. Mm. What are you saying, Brian? I'm going to say it again. It's not easy, but we must walk. The Bible says that we're to walk by faith and not by sight. The faith tells us we should expect something. My faith says I see what's happening. I know what's happening. I know what I'm dealing in. I know what I'm dealing with, but I'm expecting something. My faith tells me that I have ownership of God. God's promises because he's already released them out of his mouth. And if God has released them, I have them. I have ownership of them. We talked about it in the Bible study a couple weeks ago. Your faith is your title and your deed. In other words, it's saying it's yours. Uh-huh. The vehicle is yours. That territory, that property is yours. I'm not talking about in the physical. I'm talking about in the spiritual. So we have to walk by faith and not by sight. Oh, it's a place of expectation to see. Oh, I know you're going through, uh, but you have something to hold on to uh, and something to hold on for. Uh. Somebody, do you expect a turnaround? Uh, oh, well, glory to God. My face says uh, I'm expecting a turnaround in my situation. Uh, I expect my healing. Mm. I expect my salvation for my children. I expect salvation for my family. I expect salvation for my friends. I expect greater. I expect to see the goodness of the Lord. Oh, I was reminded of the quote Pastor Webb used to say all the time, greater is coming. That's because there was an expectation. That was a faith that greater is coming. That was saying I have something to hold on to and something to hold on for. Why? this in David's trouble we see he he has turned to God he, he reminded himself of who God is and who God is to him David has cried in the midst of the storm oh my goodness oh can I get some help if you ever cried in the midst of the storm all while dealing with what he was dealing with he now closes the song with encouragement my God, my God, he closes the psalm and David brings encouragement to us. Watch this though. 
David is bringing encouragement to us uh, for, uh, to give us something to hold on to. Uh, as he's bringing the encouragement, uh, it's not from a happy place. Uh, it's, not, it's a place of battle. Uh, it's a place of trouble. Uh, and in that encouragement, he says, wait on the Lord uh, and be of good courage. Uh, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Uh, then he said it again, wait. Uh, I say on the Lord, uh, wait in this text means to wait in faith. Uh, uh, it means it's coming. Uh, it's coming, so I'm going to wait for it. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We expect this here. Uh, whenever we were going to school, uh, the bus might have been about 10, 15 minutes late from time to time. But we waited. You know why? Because we knew it was coming. Uh, we were waiting. We were waiting. And in God, we have to know that it's coming. Uh, God, whatever you promise, God, I know that it's coming. Uh, I may be fighting God, but I know it's coming. Uh, it may take some warfare, God, but I know that it's coming. Uh, I know that you're working it out for my good. Uh, I know some things are going on behind the scenes. Uh, and right in the place that I'm in right now, I have to be assured, God, that I know that you're working it out. Oh, in the midst of this, God, I need something to hold on to and something to hold on for. Oh, my God. What's this do? Wait, glory to God. Amen. It speaks to expectancy. Mm -hmm. It also speaks to hope. Uh, waiting is not just sitting around doing nothing. Uh, waiting on God to do something. Uh, watch this. We will to wait. Watch this in his presence. Because uh, when we're waiting in his presence, uh, we know that something is coming. Uh, we know that something is about to change the situation that I'm in. Uh, I'm in this situation. Yeah, but I know there's a change that's coming in the situation. Uh, uh, waiting means wait in his word. Uh, Psalm 135 says, I wait for the Lord. Uh, my soul doth wait. And in his word do I hope. Amen. So your waiting place is your place of hope. Oh my God. If I can add this, your place of hope is your place of help. The psalm says in 62 and 5, my soul, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from him. Oh, while I'm waiting, I'm not expecting it from the government. I'm not expecting it from my job. Even though I'm grateful to have a job, I'm not expect I'm expecting it from God because those other things are limited in what they can do for me. But my God has no limits. He can do the impossible. He can bring about miracles. So in waiting, glory to God, wait in expectation from him. While you're waiting, David said, be of good courage. Mm. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Be uh -huh. Uh -huh. like the Lord told Joshua, uh, be strong and of good courage. Uh, then he says, Be not afraid. Uh, he said, Neither be dismayed. You know why? Because the Lord thy God is with you uh, in your waiting place. Mm. If your waiting place uh, is your dwelling and abiding place, uh, guess who's there with you? Uh, God himself. Uh, he said, take this courage. Uh, in Deuteronomy 3 and 6, I'm sorry, 31 and 6, uh, Moses told the people, uh, he said, be strong and of good courage. Uh, fear not. Be that, be, um, don't be afraid of them. Uh, for the Lord thy God, he is, uh, that doth go with thee. Uh, he will not fail you, uh, nor forsake you. Uh, I want to say that again. God will not fail you. Uh, God will not forsake you. Uh, I want to give somebody something to hold on to. Uh, you may, it may not be much right now, uh, but you got something to hold on to uh, and something to hold on for. Uh, God is saying, take my courage uh, and get rid of that fear. Mm, 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 mm. Cur watch this. Uh, courage is a quality of mind or spirit uh, that enables us to face difficulty, danger, and pain without fear. Uh, whenever Moses was speaking to Israel uh, and whenever God was speaking to Joshua about taking courage, uh, he also included in that uh, to fear not uh, because fear, uh, amen, causes us, uh, amen, to be in a place uh, where we can't fight in the trouble. Uh, fear puts us in a place uh, where we're always paranoid. We're always in panic mode. We're always anxious. And all those things are completely opposite of what God told us to be. Oh, the text then says, He will strengthen your heart. Oh, why are you there in good courage? No, why are you there abiding with God? He will strengthen your heart. Because truth be told, it's a heart issue. It's out of the heart, oh my God, that flows the issues of life. So God goes right to the place, He goes right to the source of the 
problem. He goes right to the very thing that's trying to cause you to lose heart. And he strengthens us right there. Oh, he says, those that wait on the Lord, those that seek the Lord, they'll find strength. You got something to hold on to and something to hold on for. It's not our strength. It's not human strength, but it's the Lord's strength. It's a divine supernatural strength. It's a strength that helps the weary get through. It's a strength that helps the doubt turn into belief. I was reminded of what Isaiah said. Mm. He said, even the young people, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But, oh my God, but they that wait on the Lord uh, shall renew their strength. Uh, they shall mount up with wings as eagles. Uh, they shall run uh, and not be weary. Why says they shall walk uh, and not faint. Uh, walking in the faith uh, and you will not faint. Uh, you will not lose heart. Uh, I mean, the Bible tells us uh, in Proverbs 18 and 10 uh, that the name of the Lord is a strong tower uh, and the righteous run into it is safe. Uh, we have to trust him uh, when we can't trace him. Uh, oh, I heard that so many times. Uh, and I'm like, what are they talking about? Uh, and I got it. Uh, the problem, let me know what they were talking about. Uh, even when you can't see him, uh, typically when you trace something, uh, you already got an image of it. Uh, but even when you can't see him, oh my God, my God. Oh, when we can't trace him, uh, when we can't find him at the moment, uh, we got to trust him. Oh God. Oh, I know it's hard. I'm a witness, it's hard. Oh my God. But the Bible tells us uh, to trust in the Lord with all our heart uh, and lean not to our own understanding uh, and in all our ways acknowledge him uh, and he shall direct our paths. Uh, oh, the Bible says uh, the steps of a good man. Hmm are ordered by the Lord and he delighted in his way though he fall he should not be utterly cast down you know why because he has something to hold on to because the Lord upholded him with his hand David knew he had someone to hold on to and something to hold on for David said look I have been young and now I'm old yet glory to God have I not seen the righteous forsaken nor a seed begging bread I want to tell you we read these scriptures sometimes and we say, Lord, 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 but what I'm going through. But I'm reminded of what Paul went through. Paul went to God three different times for one particular thing. And God simply just told him, my grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in your weakness. Paul said, okay, most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For when I am weak, Mm, mm, mm. then I'm strong uh, you know why because it ain't your strength uh, it's the strength of the one you're holding on to uh, and what you're holding on for uh, I know you're going through uh, I know it seems easy to faint uh, I know it seems easy to give up uh, I know you want to throw in the towel uh, I know you want to say what's to use uh, I know you're questioning why is this going on uh, oh I've been faithful uh, why am I going through this uh, but I'm here to tell you uh, in the midst of that mm, if God brought you to it, uh, he can bring you through it. Uh, even in our weak space, uh, God is always going to be strong. Uh, therefore, the Bible tells us, uh, amen, glory to God. I thank God for Jesus uh, because Jesus has made a way uh, that I can come before the throne of God boldly. Oh, glory to God. Uh, and that I may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. Uh, has anybody ever been in a place of time of need uh, and you need that same grace? Uh, oh, that sufficient grace. That grace is bigger than my problems. That grace is bigger than my hurt. The grace is bigger than my dilemma. That grace, oh God, oh God, that's bigger than my enemies. The grace is bigger than the warfare that I'm in. The grace is bigger than my doubt. Oh, that grace, that grace, that grace. Uh, you'll probably say I should have fainted. I should have lost heart, but I want you to look at yourself. You're still standing. Uh-huh, you're still standing. Nobody wanted you to faint but the devil. Nobody wants you to faint but your enemies. They've been looking and waiting for it. Don't you faint. Uh, you have something to hold on to. You have something to hold on for. We want you to be encouraged. Be encouraged. 
The Lord never promised us an easy road. Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulation. Then he says, be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. That's who we're holding on to, is the one that's overcome the world. And we have something to hold on for, to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Jesus, we got to hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Those watching via Facebook, I have no manual, have no, no direct prescription to tell you how to hold on. But I can tell you the one to hold on to. That's God Almighty. Jesus has made a way that we can come right for the Father's presence. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. Why? Why has it been so hard for people to accept Jesus in their life as their Lord and Savior? Whatever prescription that you knew about that before, put it away. Whatever rituals or whatever, put it away. God wants you. He wants a relationship with his son, his daughter. He won't fail you. Will things always go our way? No. Will there be problems? Yes. Will there be trouble? Yes. But God is right there. Why oh, won't you come to him on today? This storm is big. Watch this. And there's sometimes in life where we encounter the perfect storm, where several storms infuse themselves together into one big storm. You need something to hold on to and something to hold on for. You come to the Lord today. I don't even know what I would have done in trouble without God. No, yes, I do. Yes, I do. I would have went to Aunt Bessie's Cafe, as my daughter's called it, ABC store. I would have went to the plug. My day should call it American Business College, what do you want me to know? But I went to the plug and got me a sack of weed. I would have done so many things to try to bring me comfort there in that, in that pain, in that, in, in that place of trial and storm. But even after I had done all that, guess what? It still would have been there. And I still would have been empty. We all go through. No, you don't have to do it by yourself. Go through with God. Let him be the center, the epicenter of your life. Let him be your rock, your tower. The one you can hold on to when there's nothing else to hold on to. The one that will give you the reason to hold on for something. Some people are wanting to give up, not only for not having something to hold on to, they feel like they have nothing to hold on for, but you do. God can take your pain and turn it around to purpose. He can take your pain and birth greatness. We want to pray with you. If you want, today, do you want to come to Jesus? Say, you know something, I'm tired. I can no longer do it my way, by myself, by the, by the ways I used to do it. I, I just want the Lord. Believe. Confess the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Believe that God raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. Invite the Lord to come into your heart. Say, Lord, fill me with your spirit. Lord, forgive me of my sin. Don't feel bad because you sin. Don't let that beat you up. Don't allow the devil to condemn you because of sin. We all sin and fall short. 
But confessing the sin is what it's doing is it's giving it to God and letting God handle it and cleanse us. So God said, God, I, Lord, forgive me of my sins. And you can be specific with, with God. God already knows what you did. Just tell him, I did such and such. I did this, that, and the other. And the Bible says he's just and faithful to forgive us and the cleanses of all their righteousness. So your repentance is just a cleansing. It's a prerequisite to the relationship. So come to God. Allow him to cleanse you. And say, Lord, fill my heart. I want your spirit in me. God, fill me with your spirit. And watch what God does. And just day by day, it's like any, any other relationship. It requires work. It requires time with each other. It requires knowing about that person. But that's who God wants to be. He's the, he's the one that created you in his image and his likeness. If that's you, just come to the Lord on today. If you need to reach out to someone, say, I need help in this journey. I need somebody to pray with me or walk with me in this. Reach out to us on Facebook. Call us at 910-236-9597. You're not alone. But Facebook, we get ready to let you go and let you know that you have something to hold on to and something to hold on for. And we're praying for you. Tell a quick prayer for Facebook, then we're going to go strictly over to Zoom. Lord, I ask you bless those. Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I ask you bless those, God. They have tuned in today. Lord, I pray that your word, God, would help them, would strengthen them, encourage them. Lord, I pray that your word, God, would show them you, that you will be magnified in their sight, that they will feel your presence, that they will know, God, that they don't have to give up, that they will know, God, that they can win, that they will know, God, that they have you there with them. Lord, I ask you to release the strength in their life. As you pour your grace upon them, bring healing to their spirits, to their minds, and their souls. Lord, I ask you to restore them, God, in the name of Jesus. Give them a new life. For Jesus said, when we come to him, we are a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things are new. Embrace your new in Christ. Look, from the Latter House Ministries, we want to say we love you. We're praying for you. We thank you for your support. We thank you for following us and partnering with us. But we want to invite you to join us, to become a part of the Latter House Ministry family. You may say, well, Brian, I'm not going in the buildings right now. But if you want to become a virtual member, just reach out to us and let us know. If you want to join us personally, reach out to us and let us know. And we want to remind you of our women's conference. Please, those that can, please be there September 9th and 10th, Friday at 7.30, Saturday morning at 10 a.m. We look forward to seeing you there. And we come in with a spirit of expectation that God will do something awesome and wonderful in that conference for you and for I. We love you. If you want to sow into the ministry, those instructions are on the screen. But we love you. But remember, God loves you. You have something to hold on to. And something to hold on for. God bless you. We love you. I'm going to pray real quick.